We are on Kick, K I C K dot com. We are live, but by the time you see this, we probably won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Shout out to the UK. Remember, man, y'all out here saving some of our lives with showing us love, like me myself, you know. I could have went down a numerous amounts of paths. But instead, I sit in front of the computer and I watch UK content with y'all all day, keeping myself out of trouble. Appreciate it. Um, with that being said, if you missed the live, this is where it will be. This site right here. Don't forget, we got new merch out. You get me? These are cheaper tees. These are more expensive tees that will withstand the test of time. And these are hoodies. And these are couples. Put your tea in me. Pause. <laughs> oh, that's an ill slogan. That's crazy that I just said that. My bad, y'all. Uh, Discord. Don't forget we got the Discord as well. The link to this will be down in the description. It's something in my description called a link tree. Click it. All of my socials, everything I got going on, go come up. Simple as that, man. This is Eight Worst Towns in Somerset, UK. This came out six months ago. This is by Turd Towns. You know me. I'm dropping subs. If I watch you one time, we subbing. And liking. It don't even matter. Let's get into it. Disrespect. Hello to the thousands of new subscribers and viewers from around the world. Hopefully not just the UK. This is no nope. America, Chicago, Florida. You get me. It's a new channel, but expect regular uploads starting in January. So subscribe for more. I'm here to guide you on the parts of the UK that aren't really talked about. London, Shundon. Cambridge, Shamebridge. <laughs> Bath, you're having a laugh. Never heard of Just that. Just 16% of England's population lives in London. So to see the rest, you've got to leave. With the crazy house prices and holiday prices going on in the UK right now, I want to show you that you can still nab a bargain, but you may want to avoid the places on this list. And if you live in or grew up in any of the places on the list today, let us know your experiences of living there. Let's first of all take a look at the worst places to live in my home county where I grew up in Somerset, which is an area known as the West Country. This is a collection of counties in the west of England. To many of you, this is just a green blur that you speed past on the M5 motorway to Devon and Cornwall. It has a reputation of being nothing but farms. Somerset has some beauty, but it tends to be overlooked because it doesn't have the golden beaches of Dorset, Devon or Cornwall. But it is an excellent gateway to those places and life tends to be a bit slower here. So if you're on the move- Nice little pier, nice little ferris wheel. Or just interested on in where to avoid on holiday, stick around because each of my- So if you're on the move or just interested on in where to avoid- on holiday oh it's moving backwards that's a horse going back okay stick around because each of my picks on this list is here for a bad reason let's get into it the eight crap towns of somerset number eight chard when a trip for two to miami beach including air hotel vip ticket people really be looking at miami like oh this is a great place to come it's all right <laughs> you know what I'm saying? it's okay is a really weird place. It's pretty small with a population of just 13,000. It's also pretty isolated. It's barely even Somerset. It's only about three miles from the Devon border. On the surface of it, Chard looks to be a pretty nice place. Both times I visited, the weather was sunny and when the sun shines, things don't feel as bad. The high street has some nice old buildings. It's also got a reservoir and it's not far from the south coast and places like Lyme Regis. Damn, a reservoir, that's... that's... But like a prepubescent spot, you just have to dig a bit deeper for your pus to come flying out. Chard is a place which has high crime rates, which is pretty insane for the size of the place, with a crime rate of 77 in 1000. This is 22% higher than normal rates. That's because nobody is nothing to do. You gotta be bad to entertain yourself. I don't know what it is. Violence and sexual offences are the most common in Chard. It's the second worst for crime for its size in Somerset. Chard apparently used to be much rougher, I'm not going to go too hard on old Chard because it is in a nice area and there is potentially going to be a new train station that'll help it feel a bit less isolated. Oh snap, a train station. House prices are cheap at only an average of 226000 
But the statistics don't lie, and Chard has more crime than most places its size. It does look okay on a sunny day though. Number 7, Glastonbury. Yes, there is a town called Glastonbury, which believe it or not, the world's famous festival is named after. Because okay. you guessed it, it's in some fields several miles away. The festival's <laughs> actually closer to the town of Shepton Mallet. So that's a failure right there. Glastonbury has made the list today, not because it's particularly bad, and no offense to anyone who lives there, but I'm not sure it's everybody's cup of tea. This small town on the Somerset levels has a population of 9,000. No offense, I could never live in these small towns. I'm not a small town person. I cannot do it. I'd be so bored. I, I can't, like, no. <laughs> From the distance, it has a great look as it's built partially on a hill and has the world's famous Glastonbury tour behind it from many angles. I recently looked at buying a house here because I quite like the place, but I was shocked by my research. Glastonbury tops the latest crime figures for small towns in Somerset of a whopping 102 crimes per 1,000 residents last year. Most crimes were either antisocial or violence. The main population <laughs> census is 97.8% white, and you'll find yeah. that's a pretty similar sort of figure to most of the towns on this list. Is she just throwing up? Most crimes were either antisocial or violence. The main population census. That's hilarious. She's definitely van living too. Census is 97.8% white, and you'll find that's a pretty similar sort of figure to most of the towns on this list. Yeah, I could. If you're looking to get a job in Glastonbury, think again. Glastonbury has terrible unemployment rates at close to 10%. How much of that has been caused by the pandemic, we'll have to see. This is primarily a place which relies on tourism, and without it, throughout the pandemic, the people suffered. Oh yeah, and there's no train line, so you can feel a bit isolated here. Along with this, the house prices averaged at 259000 last year, which whilst not terrible, there are a lot cheaper places on this list. Yeah, that's it. You would expect to pay a bit less for the most violent small town in Somerset. The main area to avoid is the Brenton Hill area, which reported the most crimes last year. The main reason for Glastonbury's inclusion on this list is the eccentricness of the place. Most of the town's residents look like they've been left over from the last Glastonbury festival. <laughs> Aging rockers line the pretty main street from top to bottom, just kind of sitting down waiting for the next festival to take place. It doesn't bother me, but I know some people may not quite vibe with this. They are absolutely everywhere and the shops cater to them. They're certainly on the quirky side. If you like crystal shops, this is the place for you. Ah, uh, nope. Nah, not going. Not going, because, like, I don't really like, like, I, I, I like people, but, like, certain kind of people is going to bother me. Like, and when I say that, I mean the people that they catering to, letting them walk in the shops, they homeless, like, yo, yo. <laughs> like, get out, get away. Hey. In its favor, it has a lot of shops for a place of its size, and it also has a massive retail outlet called Clark's Village, which is quite close by. Glastonbury itself is quite nice to look at. The place, not the people who live here. And the surrounding areas are nice too. Glastonbury, I don't hate you, you're just a bit weird. Oh, there is no other place in England like Glastonbury. Number six. Yeah, yeah, just like weirdos is just like, no offense like to all the weirdos, but like the unhinged weirdos. They just be doing like, st like stuff to other people. Atten. Recently voted as the worst place to live in Somerset, falling 541 places in just 12 months. It's Yatton. Calling Yatton a- No, not hippies. I like hippies, but like, it's, it's like, I know what he was talking about when he was saying that. town to start with feels like a stretch. It's essentially yeah. a road. Not that you can actually see the road for the bumper to bumper constant stream of cars built up through it. There's really nothing here. No banks, one small supermarket and a rugby club where most of the players and spectators are either in a relationship related or possibly both. Yeah. If however rugby is not your sport of choice, you can opt for train spotting or wife swapping. To its credit, the train station has great links, but I'd wager most of the traveling is outwards, not inwards. Guaranteed if I moved to any of these towns in Somerset, Somerset, I'd be the most popular person. Guaranteed. Without even trying. You don't have to know nothing that I do in real life. Just me being there. That the interest level would go like, oh, who's that? Who's that? Get Nestled me. next to the picturesque village of Kingston Seymour, things turn south very quickly once you pass the bridge in. There are a few glimmers of hope in the cycle path known as the Strawberry Line and New Eatery, Feast. But truth be told, Yatton really did die on its ass around 15 years ago. 
Yatin is so proud of its stupid cycle path that it often uses it as a selling point for this place. It's just a narrow path with vision obscured by hedges on both sides rammed full of people. On a weekend, there's nothing relaxing about visiting this place. And at the end of the day, it's just a cycle path. There's got to be something more to life. There are currently two new housing estates on the outskirts of Yatin. So, I hear you say, the place is building upwards then. No, it's just that <laughs> nearby places like Clevedon and Kongsbury have both ran out of space and hey. used Yatin as their overflow. And with the average house price of 323000 you would... Hey, he cannot stand Yatin. He hates Yatin. Expect there to be something to do past 5pm. Somehow, Yatin is the most expensive inclusion on this list. Which is laughable because the place is literally nothing. It's so dreary. Come on, Yatin. All somebody got to do is go to these places and open up one bar. Just open up a bar that feels urban city-like. You know what I'm saying? Like, open the bar and it's going to bust. Everybody going to go there. You're going to make a killing. Ooh, I don't understand. There's nothing here. There's nothing to like about it apart from when you leave the place. It's hard to know which direction Yatin needs to take. Do they need to build new infrastructure to allow for the amount of new residents making themselves bigger in the process? Or do they rest on their laurels as a small picturesque town try to push this agenda more? I'm gonna, when I come to the UK, I'm finding me a little town to open a bar for the low. I'm gonna call it TLOs. <laughs> yeah, nah. Either way, whatever they're doing now, it's not working. A simply dreary and boring pointless place to live. Number five, Minehead. Wait, Minehead? Minehead? That's supposed to be pretty nice, isn't it, I hear you say? People come on holiday here from the middle of England and it boasts of Butlins and one of the very few sandy beaches in Somerset. That's a beach? Well, much like many of the UK seaside towns, you have to walk off the promenade and see the real Minehead. Okay, so pretend this is your car. Your intro- No thanks, I don't want to pretend. Not as bad as some of the later entries in this list, but it's not exactly a great place for a holiday. This seaside town with a population of 12,000 is also nestled between Exmoor and the Quantuck Hills, both known for their beauty. Is them wild horses? Minehead itself is poorly stocked with shops considering how, Slow down, car. how isolated it is. And don't go thinking you could do shopping elsewhere. Your nearest option is Taunton, which is 25 miles away. And that leads me on nicely to talk about transport. This place sucks when it comes to getting around. You really only have two choices, the A39 or the A358. And they're both windy, small, and in the summer you've got no chance. A 25 mile journey can easily take an hour in the summer. Minehead does have a train line, which you might think would ease the congestion on the small roads in the summer. But I feel like every day, the bar would be bussing. Every day it'd be packed. No, they can't be bothered to open it properly and it just runs steam trains in the summer. It's almost like they enjoy you being stuck in your car. In the winter, Minehead is depressing. Much like many of the UK seaside towns, which pretty much closed down altogether. And then in the summer, everything opens right up. But as a resident, you would have to deal with a bunch of boozy stag dues. All of this mm -hmm. boozy has led to a slightly higher crime rate than the rest of the county. It is what it is. County at 63 crimes per thousand people. When Butlins is closed for the winter, you can expect to find a bunch of miserable old people as Minehead tops the list with the highest percentage of people over 60, at a whopping 41.5%. It's not cheap living her either, with the average house price coming in at 278000 I wouldn't be able to buy her here, but like, the, the past ones that they named, definitely. Whilst the wages here are okay, you have to factor in the petrol prices. If you live in Minehead, you're gonna have to use your car, a lot for hours a day, which pretty much nullifies the higher wages. In closing, it's okay here for a day out, but I certainly wouldn't want to stay any longer. Number four, Yeovil. Yeovil is affectionately known as Yeovile by locals, and there's a good reason for that. This isolated town has a population of 45,000 people, and they're all just stuck here. Yeovil is seriously isolated, being smack bang in the middle of bigger places like Bristol, Bournemouth, and Exeter. See, this is where I would open a bar. Yovel. All of them would take more than an hour to reach, and that's if so you're lucky. Isolated. And don't you dare think twice about trying to catch a train out of here. On the way to Bristol, the train will be stopping at fields and bowls clubs, as it seems anywhere with more than three houses must have a train station for some reason. And if you miss the train, you're screwed. It's a three hour wait for the next one. Dang. The town itself is nothing. 
There are definitely uglier places on this list, but Yeovil is incredibly bland. The people of Yeovil aren't exactly respected. It wouldn't surprise me if the term chav originated here. And to go <laughs> along with that, it has a crime rate of 118 crimes per 1,000 people, almost 50% higher than the Somerset average. Hey, yo, but yo. you can't blame them too much. There's just nothing to do here. And because you're committed to living in the middle of nowhere, house prices are good, averaging at 225,000, which is 34% lower than the Somerset average. Yeovil used to have a football team in the Football League, the only one in Somerset, but even they were relegated out of the league now. They also have a 24 hour McDonald's. Sorry, I'm clutching at straws here, Yeovil. <laughs> Number three, Taunton. Number three on this list is Taunton. Now, the fact that Somerset Council. Imagine being a 24 McDonald's. 24 hour McDonald's is a selling point for your town. Now, granted, 24 hour McDonald's is our clutch, but like, that's what I'm moving to the town for? Like, Actually, town? based here is likely the only reason that the town centre isn't completely horrible, and that there are good shops and great transport links. But even the powers that be can't stop it from officially being the most violent town in Somerset, with 93 crimes per thousand. The powers that be can't stop it from officially being the most violent town in, in Somerset. TK Maxx? I, I thought that was TJ Maxx. We got TJ Maxx's here. Or in Chicago, we did. With 93 crimes per thousand people, 37% above the Southwest average. The highest type of crime is vehicle crime, and that's likely because everyone is in a Shaun of the Dead like scramble to get away from the place. And this probably accounts for the awful traffic in and around the area, too. If a town saving grace is its service station, you know you're pissing in the wind. And you may as well be, as this is the middle of nowhere. Taunton just has so much potential to be lovely, and it lets itself down at every step. The town centre of small homely businesses could be fantastic if it wasn't for all the boarded up shops and the overweight men hanging out of the bookies. The parks and walks like Vivery and Lingford could offer a nice relaxing walk if it wasn't for the increased chance of coming across one of the people involved in the excessive amount of drug use in Taunton. Recently in the news, a London based drug dealer was caught smuggling 5 kilograms of cocaine and heroin into the area. Now the place may need a bit of livening up, but not like that. Once considered quite an affluent and posh area, it's like a little bit of livening up, but not like that. Not five keys worth of li livening up, huh? Like Taunton of recent years can't quite decide what it wants to be. Half the population still cling on to the middle class reputation, whilst the other half have overly embraced their decline and they've taken it to plummeting to new lows. Even a store called Bargain Buys closed down in 2021. When that happens, it really is time to reevaluate your lives. <laughs> Good things come to those who work. He genuinely hates this Somerset place. It's okay because he's from there, so he can, I guess. Bridgewater. Just avoid this place like the plague, because if you visit here, you may catch something. <laughs> Bridgewater has tried hard to push an agenda of change and improvement, but stacking up some new cardboard townhouses on the outskirts of this dump doesn't do much for improving this town's image. Bridgewater has always had a negative reputation. It mostly just smelt bad. And I mean, really bad. The town was dominated by the smells from a local cellophane factory, which mm. luckily closed its doors in 2005. Talking of closing, there used to be a water park called Bridgewater Splash, which was the only reason anyone from outside of Bridgewater ever visited. But that was also closed because that would be too much fun. <laughs> this town of 41,276 people is squashed next to the M5 motorway. And I expect most of you have sped past here in an effort to get away as fast as possible. The town is filled with filthy looking terraced houses, brown factories, and even browner rivers. The town, the town do look brown as hell. The center is the most dep Looks depressing. depressing place you could ever visit. Uh. It's trees and even browner rivers. The town center is the most depressing place you could ever visit. It's the worst on this list. Most of the shops are closed down and groups of young men hang around the center doing nothing. When we visited here to take some drone shots, a group of people approached us saying they love drones because it's what they used in prison. The people of Bridgewater are an interesting bunch. I've only ever seen people like this in one other place, and we're gonna get on to that. The people here don't have a lot to do, so naturally crime rates are pretty high for Somerset, coming in at 124 crimes per thousand people, mm. with most crimes being anti-social or violence. It's the most violent, medium-sized town in Somerset. Bridgewater is also the youngest place on today's list, with only 22% of the town being over 60. And there's a good reason for that. One of the only positive for Bridgewater is that the houses good, are I cheap. Guess. The average house here is only 210,000, so oh. I guess you could buy somewhere pretty nice on the outskirts and never venture into the town centre. Just jump straight onto the M5 and escape. 
<laughs> An alternative escape plan is to catch a train with good regular services between Bristol and Taunton. This is one of those places that the young people from Somerset are forced to live in due to the cheapness of it, but every single one of them can't wait to leave. Also, be prepared for everybody to spell the name wrong. The bridge part doesn't have an E in it. Bridgewater might not be oh, number one on this list, but it is the most depressing place on this list. Number one, Western Supermare. I was torn between Western and Bridgewater for the worst place in Somerset. That was until one massive fact came up which could not be ignored. Western is very similar to Bridgewater in many respects. The town centre is depressing. It's got a three part name, it's crazy. Fish and chips though. The choice of shops is poor and the people hanging around the town centre all look like they've seen better days. Differing to Bridgewater though, Western has the highest ethnic diversity in Somerset with around 95% of the population being white. It's still not a lot, but it's a fact we needed to include because people apparently care about that sort of thing. Western Supermare is also the largest place on this list with a population of around 80,000 people and it's on the sea. <laughs> it used to be a popular tourist destination in the Victor- Those are asses! Jackasses. Boring times. Let's get the good stuff out the way first. Houses are cheap. If you're young and looking in the North Somerset area, Weston is likely to be the only place you can afford, with the average house price 250000 It's not the cheap- I can't afford none of this. <laughs> list on this list, but the closer you get to the city of Bristol, the more it goes up. And Weston isn't too far from Bristol. And if you do end up buying here, you don't necessarily need to ever visit the town centre. Bristol Airport isn't very far away, which can save you on airport parking. And the nearby resort of Breen can be fun if you have small children. But that's where the good news ends, I'm afraid. I'll build up to the worst. This, this looks, I mean, you know what I'm saying? See, me personally, like, I couldn't. It's so boring. Oh, my God. The towns are so boring, the video is almost boring. That's how boring these towns look to me. It's part of Western. But first... Western is a nightmare to travel around in the summer. The nearby M5 is always jammed up at rush hour, and the alternatives aren't much better. Every Friday there's a crash on the motorway between Clevedon and Western. Same in Florida. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe people are crashing deliberately because they don't want to go home <laughs> to their bleak town. But the summer is the absolute worst, because if it's a sunny day, people flock from all around to come and see Western's sandy beach. Except it isn't sandy, it's just dark mud. In fact, the only thing darker is the disgusting water which washes alongside it. And if you do want to get in the water, for some reason, good luck, you'll be stuck in the mud. So the roads and the beach- It's like quicksand, you gotta go for a mile in to get in the water. Which is bad. But what else? Weston does have a train station. But since the pandemic, trains only seem to be running hourly, and the service wasn't exactly reliable in the first place. It gets worse. In 2010, Weston was home to 11% of the entire country's drug rehabilitation centres. Wait, which were 11% reliable in the first place. But since the pandemic, trains only seem to be running hourly, and the service wasn't exactly reliable in the first place. It gets worse. In 2010, Weston was home to 11% of the entire country's drug rehabilitation centres, which meant an influx of new characters to Weston. Never in my life. I couldn't move there. One, if it's one thing I hate nowadays, did, I didn't mind them before, you know. <laughs> for things that I will leave unnamed, but nowadays, can't stand a nitty, man. That's what y'all call him, so I'ma call him that. Hey, 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 hey. Presumably, the Western locals were not given a choice in this matter, which leads me on to Western's worst part. The reason it's number one on this list and the reason you need to avoid this place. It's not enough for Western to be the dreariest looking place with the strangest looking people. No, no. It also has to have the second worst crime in Somerset on top of that. Damn. Western has a crime rate of 90 per 1,000 people, 33% higher than the Somerset average. Yes, Taunton is worse, but I think Taunton has more going for it overall. So Western has- Is there a lot of nitties in Miami? Has a really high, <laughs> high crime rate, but it's just a dump. Yo, that's not, that, that's a, yes, there is. <laughs> it's a terrible town centre, no good shops, nowhere good to eat, and it's bad no matter what time of year you choose to visit. Avoid this place like the plague, because if you visit Weston, you're going to catch something from one of the locals. Okay, well, I will stay away. Thank you for the informative in information. Uh, TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.